Wow. West Campus, I don't know about you, but God was praised in this place. Uh, East Campus, thanks for spurring me on. It's so fun to worship with others and get our focus and our hope in the right place. We are now in the fourth week of school, and there's still one more first that hasn't happened in a chapel. Uh, I've had the chance, I love going to the first chapel for everything. I've been to I Chapel, I've been to liturgical chapel, senior chapel, and uh, there's all these great things that are happening in both mornings and evenings, but there's still one chapel that has not happened yet, and that is Evening Prayers Chapel this week. On Thursday at 6 o'clock, Pastor Leo will be leading that, and can I just say this, if you're already in a routine and you're going to certain chapels, that's great, but if you ever have a free moment and you want to switch it up, there are so many great things happening. One of the spots that we like to make sure you're aware of, too, is on the fourth week, we always do baptisms and outdoor Kaleo. And this is my personal apology. If you've tried to come to Kaleo and we've run out of uh, seats and you haven't been able to come, we got plenty of Dillon Field AstroTurf for you to sit on. Everybody will get in, I think. So show up tonight. We're going to do baptisms as well. There's just so many great things happening. Let me do something a little bit different this morning in introduction and prayer. I uh, feel like it would be really important for us to do a community prayer moment on two different levels. One is it's been inspiring to me how many of you as students have both a global and local hearts and minds. Many of us are aware as we watch the news what's been happening in the Philippines with the typhoon and the devastation and what's going on there for so many people. Also in North Carolina, the hurricane Florence and this morning heard another a death toll of 37 people and just heartbreaking. And while we have this space here in Southern California with sunny, beautiful, starting to be fall weather, there are a lot of people around the world that this is a cold, wet, homeless, no house Where's my next meal coming from moment? And it just feels like it would be wrong for us not to stop and beg God for mercy. But when we beg God for mercy and beg God to work, we also need to be ready to say, and God, if there is something I can do what's with what's right in front of me or around the world, help me to do that. I want to pray that way. The second way I want to pray this morning is for a little bit of uh, home cooking, okay? Here's the deal. On Monday morning, Pastor Tatiana brought the word, and we talked about dwelling with God. It's so great to have a local pastor in our community, one of our chaplains that is able to preach like that. But we also get a chance to hear from our Student Life VP today for some more home cooking. This is one of my favorite spots here because the VP has influence and decision-making and the ability to watch out for you. And can I just tell you, you have a VP that is a student's VP. With youth pastor experience long ago, with a PhD from the Claremont Colleges, uh, university, with all the different experience she has in res life, community university, associate dean, and now VP, I want to pray for her as well as she continues to lead in her whole first year of doing student life VP. So we're going to welcome her up here, and then we're going to pray real quick. Dr. Sheila Simons, come on up here. We will pray for the Philippines, and we will pray for North Carolina, and we will pray for our VP. Does that sound good? East to West, bow your heads with me. Uh, Lord, today, uh, even with sunny weather here and a roof over our head and food in our stomachs, we want to slow down and beg that your graciousness uh, would work in all those that are doing rescues, all those that are providing, all those that are watching out for those that need help. God, help us not just pray for the Philippines and just pray for North Carolina, but Lord, give us eyes to see what we can do and act now, even if that means watching out for somebody right here in Southern California. Lord, help us to be a people that live out our faith. And Lord, we lift up our VP this morning. Would you guide her as she brings your word to us? Would you encourage her? Would you give her wisdom? And would you help her as she has a whole first year in front of her of what it means to guide and be the people's VP? Thanks for a leader that cares about each of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Good morning, West Campus as well. Uh, so let's see. So I've been thinking a lot about the first chapel, actually. So if you remember the first chapel, John Wallace, um, via uh, video, he shared with us about the Thai boys soccer team, right, that got rescued. They were stuck in a cave for over two weeks, um, so 12 boys and a coach, but there was a rescue plan that was set aside and that uh, they were rescued. And he 
kind of um, talk through that, but also talk about how God has a rescue plan for us through Jesus. And so during that time, he challenged us to think, okay, what does it look like for us to be a part of this great rescue plan? So for me, I've been thinking about, okay, so where do I belong in this picture? And trying to figure out where is my place in this calling and what is my role in it? So all of us play a role of some sort, and we are all created to play uh, various roles. It's not going to be one single thing. And so for me, professionally, I am the vice president for student life. But personally, I am a wife. I am a daughter, sister, friend, mentor, mentee, because I'm still mentored by many people. And my favorite is the fact that I get to be a mom. So I have two amazing kids, Kayla and Travis. You'll always hear about them, so don't get sick of me for that. Kayla is in fourth grade, and Travis is in first. And the reality is many of you are currently playing roles in my kids' lives. So this year, I had the chance of going on walkabout and Team Coyote. Um, so Team Coyote uh, is the list of new additions of the aunties and uncles that my kids call them. Um, and so for them, they are blessed because of Team Coyotes and also others who are around this room that have invested in my kids. And part of that is that they get to actually play Nerf Gun Wars at my house. And you'll see the picture of them playing Nerf Gun Wars. Um, they came over to my house and we played for over an hour um, playing. And this whole Nerf Gun thing was introduced by one of you, Uncle Ryan, I'm sure you are out there, several years ago, he introduced Nerf guns to my son, and he started loving this whole game. Um, but also, he loved, um, he loves this whole Nerf gun thing because of this movie, Star Wars. So I wanted to show you a clip from Star Wars. I love that movie. So Rey basically finds herself in a space, right? where she was trying to return BB-8, the droid, back to the resistance. But in the process, she hears the call. And for her, she actually didn't want anything to do with it. She wanted to go back so that she could wait for this family or someone who left her behind. But she hears the call, and she eventually responds, and she finds herself in the middle of all, the, all of it. And she plays a critical role. So have you ever wrestled with the idea of being called to something? I think all of you are here in college at APU because you, are, you feel drawn to do something with your life, and you believe that you were meant to do something. And by coming to APU, you are preparing for the work that's to come, so that you get your degree so that you could step into some sort of profession that you are called to, right? I hope you're here for your degree. Um, but how many of you know exactly what you are going to do after APU? Anyone? Yeah? Freshman, yes. Um, so, and how many of you are wondering if you even chose the right major and you have no idea where God is leading you or what, will you, what you will do after graduation? Your favorite question, seniors, right? What are you gonna do after graduation? So, how many of you are still kind of wondering? Yeah? And that's a lot of seniors. I know, because it's the conversation we always have. But seriously, have you thought about where God is leading you, or what is your purpose? So do, do you believe that God has created you uniquely for a specific purpose in mind? And I am not necessarily talking about just about life after APU and the job that you are going to get, but I am talking about how God is calling you to do something that isn't necessarily tied to your profession. But he is calling you not to something after APU either, but he is calling you right here, right now. In John 15, 16, Jesus said, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. In the Amplified Version, it says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And I have appointed and placed and purposefully planted you so that you would go and bear fruit and keep on bearing. 
and that your fruit will remain and will be lasting, so that whatever you ask of Father in my name, he may give to you. So Jesus chose you. You didn't choose him, right? You were created for a purpose. And Jesus is calling you to respond to him. And so there are two types of calling. One type of calling is a calling that he has for all of us. And then the second one is specifically for you as an individual. So for all of us, Jesus is calling us to him. So he is calling us to have a personal relationship with him. And we were created by God to be in relationship with him. Do you believe that? In John, Jesus isn't just inviting us. Here, he's actually commanding us to remain in him. And I believe in order for us to understand where Jesus is calling us as individuals, you must know the caller first and be in active relationship with him so that you would know what he is calling you purposefully for. And so Jesus is um, calling us as individuals to respond to him. And he is stating that he chose us, one, but he purposefully planted us, and he is going to lead us through it. And do you believe that God has created you uniquely, and that God made you different than others so that he could um, actually do the work that is set just for you? My two kids, the one that I told you about earlier, still, Kayla and Travis, um, they are very different. Kayla has always been wired to think about others. She is the sweet girl who wants to make sure everyone is okay and wants to take care of everybody else. So if you were to ask her, what would you want to do when you grow up? She'll say, I want to be a doctor so that I could help others. Pretty cool, huh? My son, on the other hand, um, he's so cool as well, but he's a dreamer. And he dreams about big things. And currently, he loves baseball. And he loves the Dodgers. And yeah, okay. And this past Sunday, he actually had a great little league game. Little league, yes. But he did so well uh, that right now, if you were to ask him, he'll say he wants to be the pitcher for Dodgers when he grows up. Okay? But he also loves to dance. He loves to do the floss, which all little kids do. And also, Orange Justice is another new thing that he likes to do. So if you were to ask him tomorrow, he might actually say he wants to be a dancer and compete for World of Dance and win the $1 million. Yeah. So I love the fact that he is figuring out his gifts and talent and how it lines up with his passion for things. So no matter what, I am excited to see how God will use my children and call them to do the work that's been set aside for them to do. And I can't wait to see how God will invite them to be a part of this great rescue plan. And my prayer for them as their mom is that they will remain in Jesus so that they will figure out where they are called to serve and they would know what it feels like to bear fruit. And um, part of being a fruit tree is to experience pruning. And when you think about pruning, it doesn't sound fun at all, actually, because it's about being trimmed and cut and all those things. And, but even if it's painful, it's actually necessary for us. And did you know that fruit trees have to be pruned annually? Which means pruning doesn't happen once and you're done, right? That it happens on a regular basis. And the amazing thing about pruning um, is that you cut things off. It's kind of weird just because you want things to grow, but yet you cut it off so that it grows and for it to be healthy. And so often when we think about pruning, we think about cutting and getting um, rid of diseased or damaged limbs, and you prune to help the plant to produce more fruits, right? And this is done so uh, by creating space, actually. So it's not just about cutting things, but it's about creating space so that the sunlight could effectively impact the plant itself and then allow circulation, air, to circulate more effectively so that it grows and it becomes healthy. And did you also know that pruning is also about helping the plant to create a structure and a framework that allows them to be stronger so that when it starts bearing fruit that it could actually hold on to the fruit. So when you think about being pruned, it may include experiences where 
you weren't expecting certain things, right? So things like removing things. It could be a habit, or it could be even people in your life, so that God could reach you more effectively and allow you to breathe and grow more. And it also may include going through a tough life situation. And through these experiences, God can strengthen you and develop you and make you even stronger. One of my mentors said um, this to me recently. He said, you can become stronger by lifting heavier things, you know. And I thought, oh, I don't want to. But I'm like, okay. Um, but have you found yourself in a place where you thought, I am led to do something. And when you actually got there to do that work, you experienced something completely different, far more challenging than you expected. And you were drawn to it, therefore you responded, but it turned out to be different than what you thought. So you sign up to do fill in the blank, whatever it may be, um, but you didn't sign up for this, whatever this may be. For some of you, you sign up to go to college, but you didn't sign up to miss your family this much. For some of you, um, you signed up to be a friend to somebody, but you didn't expect to be in an unhealthy relationship with them, and you actually call them out, so that's not something you expected to do. But on the, after that, they actually ate, um, end up hating you for the fact that you called them out. So all these hurt, right? You weren't expecting. Um, I've also met students who have said to me, I decided to follow Jesus but I didn't expect to be disowned by, by my family for being a Christian. <coughs> so when you think about um, all these different pruning process, it's a really a great visual as to how God might be working in our lives. Um, and although these expectations that you may have had um, doesn't align, it's still a part of your pruning process. He will cut limbs off that will hinder you from growing and also producing fruit. But he will prune you so that you could still become stronger. And as you continue to remain in Jesus and lean into where he might be leading you, you will experience pruning. So expect it. You will be pruned. Jesus will prune you so that you can remain in him and that you can be healthy. He will prune you so that you can bear much fruit. And he will prune you so that you can lift heavier things than you expected. Earlier, I shared with you about the privilege that I had to go on walkabout with these guys, right? Coyotes. Well, for those of you who don't know what walkabout is, because some of you may not know, it's a 10-day backpacking leadership training that all RAs go through. And it, this was our 44th year doing it. And out of the 44 years that we've done this, and out of the 23 years that I've been on walkabout, We've never shortened our trip like this before. And because of the smoke that we were experiencing, we had to cut it short. And so I wasn't sure how much of this was going to impact our students' experience. I was a bit concerned. But I am so grateful for our students and what God did in and through them because that experience still allowed our students to understand what it looked like to be obedient and for them to remain in God because God still worked. God still called them, God still challenged them and developed them so that they could become an amazing leader. And if you were to ask them um, what they were expecting and was it different, they probably would all say yes, it was not what we expected to be inhaling a lot of smoke and leaving early. But God still worked. As you discern God's call on your life, here are three things that you may want to lean into during your process. First of all, scripture. Bible is power powerful. And God gave us that tool so that we could use it. So use it. And by reading and reflecting on God's word, it will help you to remain in God and remember who is calling you. Gifts and talents. You all have it. And God gave you gifts and talents so that you can use them, not to sit on them, and typically, when you use your gifts and talents that God gave you, you will find joy and fulfillment. And I think it is important for you to know your gifts and find ways to um, continue to develop them and to sharpen them. Because more often than not, God will use it and bless others through it. 
I read recently that stated vocation is a calling that merges our mission in life with God's mission on earth. So when you are leaning into where God is calling you and where God is pointing as a possible vocation, your gifts and talent will, talent will match up with where you are supposed to be. Frederick Wiegner said, vocation is the place where our deep gladness meets the world's hum greatest hunger or need. The third piece is for you to lean into others. I stand here in front of you as a product of my mentors. You were never meant to do this thing by yourself. God wanted to make sure you had others who will walk with you. And so for me, I had mentors in my life that really, truly, they sharpened me and made me stronger. And if you are looking for people to be praying for you, sign up for D Group, sign up for um, all the mentor programs that we have. But some of you could email me so that I could be praying for you. So email me. It is important for us to remember that when we feel the um, a leading of the Holy Spirit to do something, whether it is to apply for a leadership position or go into a certain internship or picking a certain major that leads to a certain profession, or it could be as simple as walking across the Cougar Walk and talking to someone. Remember, it is because of the call God has on your life, and he chose you. Some of you may know where God is leading you and calling you to do, but you might be resisting it stating, I am not ready, or I don't have that gift or that talent for that job, so don't pick me, right? Moses did that too. He isn't asking you to have it all figured out, because if he did that, he's going to be waiting for a really long time. Um, but he just wants you to be obedient to him. And again, in the first chapel, John challenged us to be a part of God's great rescue plan. And he also challenged us to be a community of second chances. So if you feel like you can't follow Jesus or do the work he has set for you because of your past, let it go. Let go of your past because Jesus is calling you and he has a plan for you regardless of what's, what happened in the past. We don't know exactly what God might be asking for us to do. But if we know who is calling us, then we must act in obedience. I spoke to our student leaders about a month ago, and I asked two questions. First, I asked if they signed up to become a leader because they felt called to and wanted to respond in obedience. And their answers were yes, which is a good thing. And my second question to them was, would they still remain faithful to their call no matter what God decides to place on their path or on their plate? And I am sure Many here who are leaders on our campus are fully enjoying what they get to do to serve our community. But I am also sure that there are some of them who are saying, I thought it was going to be this, and I didn't sign up for that. But regardless, will your name still remain on the list where you said signing up? Azusa Pacific University, are you leaning into what God is calling you to do today? Not tomorrow, but today. Are you abiding in Jesus and our Father and the Holy Spirit so that you can respond to the call we have because of who they are, who God is? If you are responding to God's call by being obedient, will you continue to follow the caller and do the work that is set before you, regardless of how difficult the task might be. If you said yes to the call that God has on your life, then I am excited to see how God will use you. My question is, again, will your name still remain, even if you don't like the season and it seems too difficult to stay? Will your name still remain, even if you don't know what is going to happen, and you don't really know fully what is being required of you. Let me pray for us. Thanks, God. Uh, thank you for calling each and every one of us to be in a personal relationship with you. And God, as we continue to know you more, I pray that you would um, speak to us so that we would know 
the individual calling, the specific work that you have set for us. And when we know that, um, give us courage so that we could respond in obedience and do the work that's been set for us, Lord. Thank you so much for loving us, and thank you for allowing us to be a part of this great rescue plan and the fact that you've rescued us. And so I ask that you would move on our campus and move in a mighty way so that we will see a different community on our campus where we are always responding to your call. Thanks for everything. It's in your name. Amen.